Today we're going to be going over how to use PHP CLI to be able to run code against an external API. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of DevDrawer. Today we're going to be going over some simple stuff that you can do in CLI. So if you're not familiar with CLI, it's essentially you know a command line um, where you can run code. Um, so for example, I'm going to open up my PowerShell terminal over here and we do something like php index.php because we're currently located inside of our CLL folder, uh, CLI folder. Um, and I want to run the index.php file. So it, currently it doesn't do anything, but if I come over here and do something like php echo hello, and now if we run it again, it says hello. So CLI is just an easy way to kind of run your code um, from a command line interface. So if you have something simple like you want to pull an API or you want to um, if you want to just have your users run a simple command uh, without having to go to a website and do all this stuff, you can do it all locally. Uh, this is a pretty good way to do it. And, you know, you can become more familiar with CLI, but essentially it's um, just a command line interface to process your, your files. Um, so what I want to do in this tutorial is show you how to use CLI to pull from a external API. Um, in order to do that, I need to create a few files. The first one I'm going to create is going to be, of course, our index.php, and then I'm going to create a another file called autoload.php. Um, and you may have seen, you know, I've created this file before. Um, I actually have an entire tutorial about creating your own custom autoloader, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about everything inside of this file. You can watch that video if you need to find out more information about it. But uh, you can follow along uh, as part of this tutorial to kind of figure out what we need to do. So let's do SPL autoload register. And then we're going to pass in a function variable class and then inside of this we are going to uh, actually I need to do this pass in the function with the variable class um, let's see this so we're running a function here there we go okay so now we have our auto load register and we're going to set up a prefix. So let's do prefix equals, and we're going to do app slash slash. Then we're going to do a base directory. And that's going to equal underscore dir underscore source. And let's go ahead and add an ending slash there. And then we're also going to create a length variable. This is going to be equal to string length prefix, just so we can make sure that it's there. Then if zero is not equal to, uh, let's see, string strncmp. We're going to pass in prefix class and length. Then we're just going to return nothing. So if it's uh, if it doesn't match our um, prefix class and the length, if they're all um, if it's not what we're looking for, then it's going to uh, skip over it. So essentially we're going to create a folder called source. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So we're going to do new folder called source. And that's where it's going to be pulling in the base directory. Okay, so if it does exist, we're going to do a relative class equals substring class length. Then we're going to do file equals base directory dot string replace this with that. Okay. 
Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about this. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to um, creating your own auto loader. So this is just essentially doing what's inside of that tutorial. Um, so I need to add something here. So this is going to be relative class. And then we want to make sure that we're hitting that .php file. Okay, so that looks about right. Let me minimize that so I can look at it. Um, all right, so everything looks good there. And then we're going to do if file exist file. We want it to require file. Okay, so that is our auto loader. And now I'm just going to require this. So we're going to do require once. Auto load. I need to do my PHP opening brackets. Require once auto load PHP. And there we go. So now if we run this, it still shouldn't say anything. Um, it shouldn't have any errors or anything. Good. Okay, so everything's working good so far. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and create inside of this source folder. We're going to create a new file. I'm just going to call it data.php. And then inside of this data.php, this is essentially going to be a class. Um, so whenever we're creating our class, let's go ahead and do PHP. And in our auto load, we have our namespace as app. So we're going to keep it as app. So we're going to do namespace app. And then we're going to create our class data. And um, let's go ahead and create, uh, let's go ahead and create our public function construct. Okay, and right now we're not calling anything, we're not passing anything to it, um, so let's keep going. All right, let's create some public or private variables inside of our construct. So the first one we are going to set up as an integer, and we're going to do post ID, and it's going to be equal to potentially be null. Um, so I am using PHP 8, so if I do PHP minus V, you can see I'm using 8.1.3 so some of this like this for example is going to be PHP 8, PHP 8 specific um, you don't necessarily need to have that in here um, so if you're using PHP 7.5 or whatever it is that you're using that's not 8.1 or above um, you may run into some potential issues with some of the code uh, but just keep in mind that this is being written for PHP 8 okay so we're going to pass in the public ID or a post ID. So let's go ahead and create this private variable. So we're going to do private post ID. And then let's pass in another variable. So we're going to be hitting a dummy API. Um, that dummy API is going to be something you can play around with. And it requires certain things. So before I hit the API, I'm going to show you how it all works um, for the CLI part of it. And then we can actually hit the API to test it out. Um, okay, so the next one I'm going to do a bool, and this is going to be display comments, and then I'm going to do another bool, which is going to be display, uh, let's see, display array. Um, so again, the type hinting is only available. Yeah, I believe it's only available in eight, but it could be in seven. But you know, just play around with it. If you're having issues, you can just remove the type hinting, which would be this and the bulls. Okay, so we have post ID. So let's do another private. So we're going to do private um, display comments, and then another private. This is going to be display array. If I could type, there you go, display array. Okay, so our post ID, I'm going to use dot block to create it. So it's going to be post ID, and the variable is going to be an integer. 
and then over here again and then this one's just going to be a boolean so this is going to be display comments and pool and then finally we're going to uh, whether or not we want to parse the JSON as array or object and again this is going to be a bool okay so inside of this let's just pass these variables so that we can return them and I can show you how to use them so let's set up this and post ID equals post ID and we're going to do this and uh, you may have seen a newer video that I did talking about what you can do in you know 8 so normally you wouldn't have to do this in 8 but just because I have some viewers that still use 7 um, I'm going to go ahead and write it out the way it would work in 7 as well but in 8 you could essentially just not do this at all um, so that's another video you might want to go check out um, should be in my uh, previous videos I think it was just a few weeks ago or maybe a month or two ago that I did it so you might want to check that one out as well okay so we're going to do display array and that's going to be equal to display array okay so now we have um, let me go ahead and close this out since we don't need it all there okay so now we have our variables and I'm just going to create a new function so public function and it's just going to be something like display data so that way we can just see what we're getting and then we're going to return um, the post ID and that's going to be equal to this post ID and then we're also going to return so display comments and this is going to be equal to this display comments and then finally display array it's going to be equal to this display array okay so now we're just going to use this as a function to call something so let me go ahead and just add that in there so we can see it so this would be a sample function to display CLI data and we're going to be returning an array okay so now inside of our index.php let's actually start doing some code so what I wanted to do is something like this we're going to do PHP index.php and then I want to pass in a variable um, so let me expand this out a little bit so I want to pass in a variable which is either going to be a null or a post ID so in this case I'm gonna do one and then I also want to put uh, to pass in a flag which is going to say whether or not to display the comment so it's either going to be a null or it's going to be uh, minus C and then finally we're going to display either uh, whether it's a JSON or a PHP array uh, whenever it goes to do so it's either going to be true or it can be null or false or whatever it is so if we run this right now it doesn't do anything however if we come over here um, let's see let's create our post ID and we what, what we want to check for is if is set the arg v which is going to be the argument that's coming from CLI and it's going to be the first argument and let me go ahead and get this done no, not there here okay so get that done now if it is set we want to force it to be an integer so we're going to do int we're going to pass it as an int and then it's going to be arg v and one one okay otherwise we're just going to pass it as a zero so right now if we run this again um, actually I need to echo that out so let me just do uh, let's see echo post ID 
Okay, so now if we run this again, it should give us a one. Um, and if we come over here and let's say we want to do null, it should give us a zero. So we can pass in a one or a null. Um, so if we don't want it to pull a specific ID uh, from the API, we want it to pull everything, we pass in a null and it will pass over everything. So test case, um, we just proved that it works. So now let's do the other ones. So we're gonna do our second variable is going to be display comments. And this is going to be equal to is set um, let's see, argv2, and if argv2, argv2 is equal to minus c, we want to return true, else we want to return false. set there went too far with that okay um, let me resize this a little bit okay so essentially now if we return it with our minus C that we have in there um, well, I'm not I'm not echoing anything else so let me let me get done writing this code and then we'll echo out some things so we can actually use this uh, data function here actually let, let me go ahead and add that in there Okay, so we got our auto loader, so we should be able to use app slash data. And then down here, let's do a var dump. And it's gonna be new data. And we're gonna pass in the post ID and display comments. And then for now, I'm just going to do false for the display array since I don't have it added yet. Um, and then we're going to do, we want to call the function display data. And we're not passing anything into that. So let's try to run it again and see what that does. Okay, so we got a post ID of zero, display comments is null. Let me just verify there. Okay, so we are passing in null uh, minus C and then true. So display comments is currently being set as null. Um, let me see, so if I pass in ID of one, it passes that display comments, and then this is still being false, but display comments is null. So should not be displaying null, it should be displaying a boolean of true or false. So what do we have here? We have is set argv2, and if argv equals minus c, we want to return true, else return false. Okay, well let's look at the code and see what it's doing. Okay, so we are doing display comments, display comment, uh, so that's it. Um, so we're actually not passing in the right name here. All right, let's run this again and see what it shows us. All right, there we go, so now we're displaying bool true and if we come over here and take this and turn it into a null display pool false. Okay, so it is working um, as expected. It's just I had, uh, I was missing my S right here. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's create this third variable. So we're gonna do display array equals is set and then this one's gonna be argv3. So argv3 and argv3 um, if it equals to true and this is going to be coming across as a string so if you enter in true it's not a boolean yet so what we're going to do is make it um, a boolean so if it doesn't, then we're gonna do false. Okay, so now let's do display array. Okay, so let's come over here and run this. Uh, let's see, undefined variable display r. Okay, so let me make sure I got that right. Let's try that again. Okay, cool. So now it's doing true, false. So let's clear this 
and let's just remove that and now it says false and if we put in the word false it should also say false okay so we got our basic structure of it set up we're passing over the variables like they're expected um, so true false good okay so now let's come into our uh, data.php and we're going to create another function um, so this function that we have right here just displays that data um, I want to create another function that's going to actually do something with an API so public function get API and this API is it's a free API um, you can basically just go on it and read the information about it but basically it just gets a whole bunch of dummy posts like blog articles um, so the comments would be you know whether or not you want to display a comment for a specific article um, it can return in either a JSON format or a PHP format um, well it returns in JSON we can convert it to uh, PHP so we can actually read it um, in the code and then the post ID if you don't have it on there it returns everything so I'm going to go ahead and do let's see the API is going to be equal to let's do API URL and this is going to be equal to the uh, the dummy API so it's HTTPS then it's going to be JSON placeholder dot type code and again I wouldn't I wouldn't use this on any kind of production site um, just because it is it you'll see whenever you get the data it's it's dummy data um, and then post so what happens with this URL is if you have something like post one um, it'll flag it so that's what we need to do with our post ID is to flag it to pull post one otherwise it just pulls the post which would show you all of them um, okay so let's do post ID and this is going to be equal to if this post ID is not equal to zero then we want to display slash and get that post ID so this post ID let me resize this a little bit so this post ID um, otherwise we don't want to push anything to it um, so right now we can do the API URL and then the post ID and if it has an ID it'll do slash one if not it'll just do no slash no one uh, which will display all of the post um, so let's also do something for display comments so display comments equals this display comments um, and if it does equal that there is a URL that you would add to it so comments would be that URL so slash comments otherwise we don't want to pass anything for that either okay so now we have our post ID and our display comments so let's go ahead and grab the JSON which should be JSON I'm just gonna do file get contents and we're gonna pass in the API URL and then we're going to pass in post ID and then finally we're gonna pass in display comments so that should give us the entire URL that we're looking at and we can test that so let's comment this out for now and let's just do echo and I'm going to just copy this over so we can see what URL we're actually grabbing so echo that okay and then I'm gonna go back in our index.php and we're just going to um, we're just gonna run this function so let's do new data post ID display comments then display array and the function that we are wanting to hit is going to be get API and we're not passing anything to it so now uh, let me just comment this out so we don't have to worry about the getting that information um, okay so I just ran the code again and let me clear this up to make it a little bit easier to see okay so we are doing we want to grab the post one and we want to display comments and then right now we don't have this false being commented but you can see it does you know this typey code slash post slash one so if we come back in here and we do it again and let's say we remove that and put a null here 
now it has just post and it's going to display all posts and all comments then if we come back in here again and take this out and do null again now it's just going to be displaying all posts so the PHP code is working as expected okay so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this in a var dump so var dump because what we're fixing to do is actually hit the API so let's wrap this in a var dump um, so you can actually see what it's doing um, so inside of here let's remove our echo we're going to be grabbing that get file contents and that's going to be returning a JSON result for us so we actually want to now parse it out whether or not it's displayed as an array or it's just displaying the JSON so we're going to do our response equals if uh, this display array equals true then we want it to do a JSON decode and we're going to be passing in the JSON we want it to be an array so it's going to be JSON decode true otherwise we just want it to return the JSON okay and then finally let's return our response okay so that looks good we come over here now if we run this again uh, let me just pull up one with the comments and it's going to hit the API and it's going to pull up all of the comments that are associated with the post ID one and we have it displayed as a uh, JSON object so it's coming back as JSON so if we come in here and we do the same thing and we turn this into true now it's going to display it as an array for us so let's take that flag off for comments and we're just going to make this null now it should just return information about post ID so we got title body and everything's coming across as we're expecting it to so let's come over here and take this one off and also make that a null and it should give us a big long list of all of the posts so this is all of the posts that they have alright so everything seems to work um, and let's just also verify our um, display data part so if we do this again we have the first well scroll past it let me uh, let me put this at one so it doesn't scroll past it so quickly okay so now we have we're calling our two functions uh, one of them is just displaying what we're doing so we are not returning the comments we are displaying it as an array and you can see that is reflected over here where it's not displaying the comments and it's using post ID one okay so let's see let me go ahead and add a doc block to this so we can describe what it does we're going to send data to a sample API and return a response and then this is going to be returning as an array or an object um, let's see we got all of this I'm just looking through my notes to see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in up here just what you can do. So it's going to be this. You're going to run php index.php. And basically, I'm just typing out what would be on the CLI side of it. So we're going to run index.php. And the first variable is either going to be a post ID or null. And then the second variable is either going to be a minus C or null. And then the third variable is going to be true or so true or null or false. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're going to be passing this as an int. This is going to be a flag which could potentially equal false. Um, and then this is going to be a bull um, so this right here is going to be a test dump of variables and then finally uh, send data to API okay so I mean that's that's pretty much it I mean you can create as many uh, flags as you want um, you can run it um, however you want to and you can make it where it hits multiple things this is just basically like a simple 
overview of what you can do with CLI, but it's pretty cool if you've never used CLI before. It's a uh, it's a pretty cool little uh, command line interface that you can do. Test out your code, uh, make sure that you're getting responses that you want. And so let's say if you're building out an API and you need to hit it with PHP code, instead of having to write all of the functions that you need. You essentially just go in there and you can create a, a simple class like this, or you can just do it in straight PHP. You know, everything, it doesn't have to be done in a, um, you know, in a class like this. We could have done all of that inside of our index.php code. And essentially, you can just hit that API, send over your flags that it's looking for, and, you know, test your responses just using straight command line code. So it's pretty cool if you need to have some maybe non um, developer people take a look at your stuff. Uh, if you need to run a bulk amount of code um, or you need to run a bulk amount of updates, you know, this right here is just one line of code. You can run those updates and have it, you know, dictate, you know, certain things about it. You can create different classes off of this and not, not have it where it's just one singular class. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it that you can normally do with PHP as well. Um, but this just makes it where you have a command line interface or CLI to be able to handle it. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and uh, I do have to apologize for some of the um, Whenever I'm pushing out my tutorial videos, there's some time in between that's not typical uh, That's actually because I'm in the process of moving um, So I've been trying to go to this new house and make sure everything's up to uh, up to where it needs to be at in order for me to move everything over but hopefully by you know midsummer um, I'll be able to be fully over there and I'll be able to start doing these videos once a week again. Uh, just right now I have a lot of other stuff kind of going on at the moment. Um, but I will get back to normal schedule eventually, uh, hopefully within the next few months or two. Um, but yeah, so that's going to do it for this. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will talk to you later.